Disclaimer, this is not an apology video for I have nothing to apologize for as I operated everything regarding the subject matter under legal protocol outlined in the platform's terms of service specified. Therefore, any information used in this video will not be taken out of context and cannot be said or used against me in any court of law or of the internet. This is a full disclosure of my truth. My only aim is to communicate that truth. Greetings, my name is Robert Porter and you may know me online as Roboto. And foremost, I am primarily a professional illustrator working in the industry and freelance for 19 years. I worked for various companies and individuals throughout my career as an artist online. I'm also a game developer, which is what this video is primarily addressing. I may have waited too long to do this, but I want to make sure that there was enough time in order for me to prepare everything that I'm going to present to you today. You may have noticed that I have been becoming involved in more increasing online drama on the internet and Twitter regarding my name as an artist and a project called Cry More. And by the end of this video, um, I will have supplied enough evidence for you to know that it should be all 100% cleared up. Let's begin. Let's begin with a quick summary of my history as an artist on the internet. I started out from scratch posting art on the internet in 2006 under the moniker Sir Robert. A year or so later, I decided to rebrand myself under the pen name Roboto, and I've been working exclusively under that moniker ever since. My artistic journey can be fully researched online, as I've never been the kind of person to hide any part of who I present myself as on the internet. Starting around 2011, I caught the attention of Udon Entertainment, and for about a year, I worked on various projects until I was signed, quote unquote, and that term is used loosely in this scenario as one of the main artists to work on various Capcom related projects. Contrary to popular belief, working with Udon was only a side job to me as I was called on to create various covers and at times small story projects, but majority of my time was spent towards building my own audience online. Working in comics is not at all lucrative and I was paid very little for all the work I've done for them under the table and under no contract. Throughout this time though, I worked with various companies through them, such as Namco Bandai and Marvel. I worked alongside Udon right up to 2020. On my own as a freelancer, I've also done various concept work for WayForward, worked as a cleanup artist on the hit fighting game Skullgirls, and even worked directly with Aaron McGruder on the defunct Boondocks reboot project. Not too long after I signed with Udon though, I decided to begin chasing my real dream, which is being a game developer. And now we get to the meat and potatoes of this video. In mid-2012, I was reached out to by an artist who goes by the name of 10 Pound Pixel online, but who I know personally as Alan Wansom, and we decided to team up and work on a game together. We came up with the concept of Crymore, with myself being the principal person in charge of creating the characters, directing and programming gameplay, and writing the lore, while Alan would primarily help build sprites and animations and help me out on designing certain gameplay concepts. We still have a good standing relationship to this day, as we both decided to take the hit for working for potentially no pay on this project as a side hustle. And we stuck together through all the ups and downs of the project. And yeah, Gators over there, the stamina bar works just as always. And you can see the gear there is set in place now. And if I, what the hell is the uh, time skip thing again? If I time skip, the gear should move accordingly. So it's going, I think this is going backwards or forward. Yeah, this is going backwards and this is going forwards. Crymore was originally slated to be a 2D, somewhat top-down action adventure game with role-playing elements. It was an overly ambitious project, as though we both had tinkered extensively with game development on our own before the time, we did not have the experience of actually shipping a game. But we were convinced that we had something potentially successful in our hands and were willing to dedicate half of our lives to making it. We quickly came to the conclusion that we needed money to make a game. We would have to hire additional programmers and artists to help bring the game into fruition. So starting off, our team was relatively small and has maintained that size throughout the game's entire development period. Around this time though, 
a new platform is getting popular with the purpose of help funding small creators to make their so-called dreams come true, called Kickstarter. And this marks the beginning of where all of this drama began, as life for me was once way more peaceful before. Kickstarter was one of the first crowdfunding sites created, and we potentially looked at it as a means of achieving our goals to create crime more. By that time in late 2012, as an artist, I was growing considerably well. I had enough of a small following to pursue the goal, and everything was pretty much set on that following. Simply put, my art was the foundation that fueled the entire project, and I knew beforehand and was well aware that anything potentially destructive would have an impact solely on my reputation as a working artist. Oh, hi. The name's Esmeralda Maximus, but you can call me Esme for short. We launched Crime Wars Kickstarter in February 2013 with a set funding goal of 60,000 US dollars and ended succeeding a little over four times the amount at $240,309. I did not anticipate succeeding four times what we were pledged, but I had no control over that, but we rolled with it anyway. Kickstarter has a system where there are pledges and backers. Pledges were simply donations, so to speak. Backers were investors. If the stated funding goal wasn't met, we wouldn't receive any funding at all. Here are the terms of service everyone, both creators and backers, had to abide by when on the platform. Under section four on how projects work, it says that Kickstarter provides a funding platform for creative projects. When a creator posts a project on Kickstarter, they're inviting other people to form a contract with them. Anyone who backs a project is accepting the creator's offer and forming that contract. Highlight here is that Kickstarter is not a part of this contract, but they still take a good chunk of your money. The contract is a direct legal agreement between creators and their backers. Here are the terms that govern that agreement. It says that when a project is successfully funded, the creator must complete the project and fulfill each reward. Keep this in mind in pertaining to what my goals are. Once a creator has done so, they satisfied their obligation to their backers. Throughout this process, creators owe their backers a high standard of effort, honest communication, and a dedication to bringing the project to life. At the same time, backers must understand that they're not buying something when they back a project. They're helping to create something new, not ordering something that already exists. There may be changes or delays, and there's a chance something could happen that prevents the creator from being able to finish the project as promised. Now, this next point is important. If a creator is unable to complete their project and fulfill rewards, they fail to live up to the basic obligations of this agreement. To write this, they must make every reasonable effort to find another way of bringing the project to the best possible conclusion for backers. A creator in this position has only remedied the situation and met their obligations to backers if they post an update that explains what work has been done, how funds were used, and what prevents them from finishing the project as planned. They work diligently and in good faith to bring the project to the best possible conclusion in the time frame that's communicated to backers. They're able to demonstrate that they've used funds appropriately and made every reasonable effort to complete the project as promised. They've been honest and have made no material misrepresentations in their communication to backers, and they offer to return any remaining funds to backers who have not received their reward in proportion to the amounts pledged or else explain how those funds will be used to complete the project in some alternate form. The creator is solely responsible for fulfilling the promises made in their project. If they're unable to satisfy the terms of this agreement, they may be subject to legal action by backers. Kickstarter took their 5% cut, which was $12,015 roughly out of our achieved goal in addition to payment processors taking $7,370. Hey everyone, Rob here. Let's show what we've been uh, working on. Um, right now, um, dialogue system is in place. It's all placeholder right now, so you just have to drop the dialogue text in, um, the dialogue box and the pictures. And right after the campaign was funded, we began work immediately on a playable demo and featured as GDC 2013 in the GDC play section of the event all weekend amongst other indie developers. During development of the game, we discovered quickly that paying for assistance 
will deplete the acquired funding rather fast. Throughout, we've been keeping up consistent updates on the game as we were moving along. Coincidentally, we were contacted by Atlas USA as our project was doing pretty well. At that time, nothing major or bad went on with the campaign. We were updating regularly and making consistent advancements in the game's development. We shared everything that was going on while trying to not spoil the game in its entirety. Because of this, over time, backers began questioning whether the game existed at all, despite our small demo videos and descriptive details every update. Our publishing contract for developing the game was pretty straightforward and quickly shifted our process into an industry standard milestone procedure for the rest of development. We were contracted to develop the game for an additional $180,000, which was given to us in milestone payment sets of $30,000 each upon the completion of each milestone. The milestones were as follows. The first 30K was paid to us within seven days of signing the agreement that we had with Atlas. The next 30K when he accepted the alpha build. The next 30K when he accepted the first content milestone build. The next 30K when he accepted the second content milestone build. The next 30K would have been paid to us upon the beta milestone build. And the final 30K paid on the mastering. We completed four of the six milestones with the first 30K given to us at the signing of the contract, all the way up into the second content milestone. Here you can see a clear, concise summary of the milestones and the specifics of the deliverables that we had to give to Atlas during each period. Um, and you could pause this and look at this for yourself and see exactly what we did up to getting to that second content milestone. Now, this is where things began to get a little bit hairy. I started going through a divorce at the time in 2016, which was of an adulterous nature. I was the innocent party, so I was blindsided by it all, and it had a huge impact on my ability to work efficiently. At this time, though, in the crimeware space, we were consistently developing the game, but mostly through whiteboxing. For those that don't know, whiteboxing is a practice in game development where we make the meat of the game with placeholder assets with the intent to fill in the potatoes later in the beta period by refining the game's assets visually. This means that the game was completely playable in rough format from beginning to end. It wouldn't make sense for us to deliver it on these milestones if the game did not exist. While this was all going on, we were having concerns with our publisher. We were being ran ragged on milestone deliverables, and it was to the point where I essentially tried to reason consistently with Bill Alexander, our primary contact and vice president of Atlas USA. There are a lot of unnecessary back and forth with editors over dialogue and gameplay, that we had to regularly commit to. The straw that broke the camel's back, in my opinion, was that at one point, we were urged to crunch on an E3 demo outside of our contracted obligation for a little over a week. Achieved finishing it, and upon completion, essentially told, never mind. I began to lose faith in my publisher, as even though we did an adjusted milestone schedule after, to split remaining payments in smaller divisions, it couldn't keep up with the pressures put on us by the backers and development. I had people to pay, and I was juggling my art career putting most of my money I received from that to the game and paying staff to achieve the results needed. My focus from the beginning of the game was to always pay anyone I hired fairly. This is why no one I worked with has come up in the 10 years of this campaign claiming they were mistreated. So essentially, my team and myself, the one leading the entire project, was completely ran through the ringer for this. I decided to cease development completely and focus solely on my art again. Now single, I got rid of my previous life completely, packed my belongings, and moved across the country from my hometown of Chicago, Illinois to Phoenix, Arizona to recalibrate everything that went on. I still had every intent to fulfill all the obligations that I set out on when I first started the project. So I analyzed everything that I could possibly do as an independent artist to bring revenue in in order to pay backers back. That was the ultimate goal. I wanted to pay the backers back, and I wanted to self-fund any project that I would choose to do myself without asking for any publisher or anyone's money. But this was also met with disaster. In addition to some of the backers who constantly broke the rules on Kickstarter by harassing our team constantly throughout the campaign period, even though we were being straightforward and providing information that we worked on the game. This also bled to people who weren't even involved, spreading rumors and misinformation about me being a scammer, taking off and running with people's money. 
bad clients who I cut ties with and don't owe anything to, continuing to perpetuate this notion and myth that I'm a scammer whenever I attempt to sell my art outside of this Kickstarter campaign. I had a foolproof plan to hard sell my work and pay the backers back as a result. I would funnel selling my merchandise back into my game so I could fund it entirely myself. I did a few tests starting in 2020, which proved that I was capable of bringing in the necessary funds in order to do so. Last year, I made a total of over $107,000 grossly, doing a small handful of merchandise drops with over 5,000 individual orders, close to the number of backers that backed Crymore's campaign originally. I fulfilled and shipped every order with only one tiny dispute. YouTube videos about me now starting to get made outlining my history and painting me as someone who has mental health problems and is untrustworthy and dishonest. No business is ran 100% perfectly, and there will always be things that fall through the cracks, but I always do my best to fix any issue or deliver on things that I started to the best of my ability in its own due time. Overall, in conclusion, this has been a huge snowball effect, and it's messing up my entire plan that I had from the outset. Now, it's encroaching on my ability to grow as an independent artist and creator and to make a living. My sales have been low, I'm struggling to make ends meet again due to life situations that have popped up and continue to pop up. And there is a growing number of people who are constantly attacking and harassing me through my social channels. I no longer feel like I can do anything anymore without a group of people sharing everything I do in a completely negative light to keep me down. Over time, this will spread and lead to damaging my reputation further, which is the entire reason I'm coming forth in this video. I knew that I had substantial proof that the game was being worked on and that things would likely get to the state all along. If anything, all I want is my name cleared. So I saved this for one final response. This is where I've decided I should quit as an artist. I posted my work for free online for close to 20 years and I'm not at all rich or wealthy. I live well within my moderate means. So here it is. I'm initiating one final crowdfunding campaign on the GoFundMe in order to pay every backer back the money that they donated me willingly that I did not have to give back to them so I can sell my work without any negative consequences. The entire point for me selling my art is to fund my own projects. And if I can do that consistently, then there's no point for me to be an artist anymore. I put every fiber of my being, time, energy, and personal money into this project to make sure it's completed right down to this day. And now it's up to my true supporters and fans if they want to see me succeed.